greeting scratchers. This is for my Redlands Conservatory class, but as always, anyone is free to follow along. So what we're going to do today is actually super fun. We're going to take Scratch and show similar examples of things you've been doing in Scratch in C++. I'm also going to do tutorials like this for other popular languages, which will all be on the web page shown here. So the first step is to go to the web page, which I'll also put in the comments of this video, which is shown right here, and that will bring up the Redlands Conservatory main web page here for my programming pages. And I've got my robotics page. So click here first on our Scratch programming icon. Here I've got the Scratch games that we've talked about before. But we're going to move on to some more advanced languages, Java, C++, and also probably Python and some other really super languages. So head over and click here. And this page is going to be expanded greatly. Probably by the time you see this video, this page will already be expanded. Uh, but these are editors, which are online editors for C++, JavaScript, Python, and PHP. Uh, all of these languages have extremely useful aspects, and we'll go into those in the future. But the cool thing here is that these are online editors, so you don't have to have any software on your computer at all. You'll be able to do all of the lessons that I show you online. and. All of our programming examples are going to work perfectly because we're all using the same editor and we're all on the same page. So it's a really handy way to go. In the future, when you decide you want to make your own executables that run on other people's computers, you will probably want to download your own compiler. Many good compilers are available free. And again, we'll talk about that in the future. So for now, right here, Mr. Walt's video and notes for C++. We'll jump to that. And I've got three examples of C programs here, which you can cut and paste into the uh, the editor there. So when you go to the editor, and I've got a handy link here for you uh, that'll take you directly to a C++ editor. We'll jump ahead by doing it this way. You will have this screen come up. So once again, if I were to zip back to that page, so from the Redlands Conservatory Core++ Mr. Walt's videos page, you simply will click on the tutorial point link, and that will take you here to the compiler. And this is where we'll do all of our programming. It's super, super simple. When you first load the compiler, it comes up with a basic Hello World program. But we'll do our own program. So let's go ahead and we will delete that. And this is exactly how you'll be able to enter your code. Zip back to the Redlands Conservatory page. And number one, Hello World, our own version of it, is right here. So all we've got to do is cut our Hello World program. And we'll cut that. And we'll paste it into the compiler. And I'm going to go over this a line at a time and very quickly explain it. Another thing, I'm not going to go into extreme detail on languages like C or Java. This is a quick get you up and running, get your programming tutorial. And if you'd like a greatly more detailed explanation of everything, that is also going to be available back on the Redlands page here. I'm going to add in the next day to day or so I have a full set of notes that I took when I had a college class in C++. And I took an entire semester and condensed it down to only 13 pages, which makes it really, really fast to learn C++. So we'll go over it quickly here. So in C, when you're doing this, uh, you're going to find that the first thing you want to do is you want to tell C what library you're going to be using. And this is in order to conserve space. Just about everything in C is designed to conserve space. So you tell it that you're going to be using IO Stream. We'll go into a lot more detail on that way down the line. But for now, let's zoom ahead. And in order to prevent you from, uh, from having to type in repetitive commands, uh, we're going to do the using namespace uh, command. And this just tells it that you're going to be handling, having a certain way of formatting things without having to type it out each time. So, and again, this is a, we can get into more detail on that, and it'll be in the notes as well. All of your C programs are going to start uh, by saying int main. And everything that is in your program, your main program loop, is going to be contained. Loop probably isn't the right word, but your main program is between the two brackets here like this. So this is very simple. The command to output something to the screen uh, is C out. This is one of the commands. Uh, there's also, <coughs> excuse me, there's also a couple of others that allow a greater formatting. But for now, this is the easiest one I think to use. And we'll use C out, and it says hello world. And then end line tells it to go ahead and end the line there. And because everything is operating under this main programming area, you always have to return a value to main. So we end our program by saying return the value 0. And it's just, a, it's just a, a placeholder in order to return a value to this and let the program know we've come to the end of our code. So super, super simple. If you want to do hello world, cut and paste it in. Go ahead and modify it. Have the computer say different things. When you're ready to see it, we'll move over to the compile button. 
And as you can see down here in the lower window, uh, everything's gone fine. If it hadn't compiled properly, some warnings would pop up. And then to see the program operate, we're going to hit the Execute button. So we compile first and execute. And there we go. Our program said, Hello World. So let's take a look at this in Scratch, just for the heck of it. So Scratch, I, you know, a lot of people might think that Scratch is not a very robust language. Actually, the newest versions of Scratch are very robust languages, I think, and do a lot of amazing things. Plus, it's always a wonderful challenge for a programmer to have a language which has a fairly limited structure and see what you can get out of it. So Hello World here is very simple. Uh, you're familiar with this. If you've done any Scratch programming, you'd simply have uh, you know, something that tells the computer where you're going to start here with the when clicked. And then we say, say Hello World for two seconds. We have our cat there. We click our green flag to have him say, Hello World. So in this tutorial, again, we're going to assume that you are familiar with Scratch. I won't go into that, and we'll go into detail on the lower level languages like C and the other ones that we're going to go to. So let's do a little more sophisticated program and into something that'll be a heck of a lot more fun for you to modify. If we come down to program number two, this actually has us enter some values and have the computer do some math. And you can do some pretty advanced math, actually, with, uh, with C. And we'll get into a little bit of detail there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that. We'll erase what we have in our compiler. And we'll put it in our new program. This is a program that I think you could have a lot of fun modifying because you can change the mathematics in it to be any type of a math problem that you want to solve. Uh, once again, we've included our library here, which we need an additional library. We're telling it that we're going to have a certain type of formatting. And to help us out with that, Here's that main loop again in our opening bracket. In C, you have to define your variables. So that's not true in some other languages. I actually wonder why it's still true <laughs> in any language. But uh, it does save memory. It does save space. It does increase speed. And that's definitely the name of the game. So uh, in this case, we'll tell it int abc. Now what we've done here is we've said our number or our variable is going to be an integer. Uh, and it's, we're going to have three of them. We're going to have an integer named A, an integer named B, and an integer named C. So those are our variables. Then we'll use that C out command that we saw before and have it say, please enter an integer to add. And then we're going to have our C in, which is the opposite of C out. It takes input from the keyboard. And our C in is going to save our first value as A. We're going to do the second thing here, the same thing here. I'm sorry again. C out, please enter a second integer. And then we'll have C in capture our next value, which will be B. And then here's our simple math equation. And it's about as easy as it could be in C. You pretty much just type it out exactly the way it looks. There's a few simple rules as far as the order when you get to more complicated mathematics uh, that the computer will solve variables in. And that's very standard in mathematics. We'll go into that when we get it. Here is printf uh, being used in order to put our, our final total value out on the screen. And this is similar to C out. As I said, it allows a little bit of formatting to be take place here, which is very handy. So let's go ahead and we are going to run that. So first, as usual, we have to compile it. And then we will execute it. And here's a quick trick. When you're going to do data entry down here, you have to click in the green space to let the computer know that we're typing down here. And as we had guessed, it says enter an integer to add. So we could say 1. And then we'll hit Enter. Please enter a second integer to add. So we've gotten to this point in the program. So we can now say 1 again if we'd like. And when we enter that, it's going to say our total equals 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2. So by making very simple modifications in this, you can do all sorts of interesting math problems. And to jump again back to Scratch and show us an example of that in Scratch, here's that same example in Scratch. So we have uh, our print statements or our outputs here. Please enter an integer. Um, we would set our variable a to whatever the answer was for our first question, set our variable b to whatever the answer was to the second question, and here's essentially that same command, c, uh, set c to a plus b, and then show our variable. So let's run that super quickly and see if our cat's going to ask us those questions. Please enter an integer, 1. We'll say enter. Please enter your second integer. We'll say 1. We'll do enter, and our answer, the answer is 2. So now you've seen an example in Scratch. I think it makes it really easy to visualize uh, going back and forth. And let's do our last example. This one's going to be super, super fast, and that is a loop. Now you've used loops like crazy when you've been using Scratch. So we're going to go ahead and show a simple loop in C, which you're really going to like. I'm going to move that over to our compiler. We will erase what is here. We are almost done with our first lesson, which shows three really critical <laughs> C programs and their Scratch examples. And you're going to be amazed how fast we move through the core, the entire core of the C language. And as I said, you're going to find the notes 
uh, in uh, back on the web page there, the Redlands web page, are going to be added very soon so that you can follow the notes in brief once you've had this just simple overview. So here's our loop and an example of a loop. And we have our int main. And we're going to actually have a variable called loop. So we're going to say an integer called loop. I probably shouldn't have called it loop because that's slightly confusing when you're using an integer called loop in a loop. But in the case of C, you would use the command for. You can also use very similar to scratch. You can use while, and you can use when, and you can use a variety of different things to say when you would exit the loop or at what time you would do the loop. You can do a lot of neat things. With for, you can have a value increment. So you can have the value get to be a larger and larger value. So this is super simple. We're going to say for loop equals 1, loop as long as loop is less than or equal to 12. So each time we go through the loop, this loop plus plus means add one more digit to it. I probably shouldn't have used shorthand there either, but this is a real handy way to make a loop increment. You could have also down here just put in a command that said loop equals loop plus 1 if you wanted to do that as well. This is a quick way to do it. Or you could have done it here as a matter of fact. So here we go. What's going to happen is it's going to go into the loop. It's going to print. This loop will run 12 times, and then it's going to go back up to the loop until loop is equal to or, or 12. <laughs> I'm confusing myself here. So we're going to have 12 iterations of the loop. So let's compile the program. We will execute it, and boom, we get it running 12 times, 12 copies of the loop. Last, let's zoom over to Scratch. We'll take a look at how you do that in Scratch. And here we go. Super simple. You'd use a loop, although in this case they call it repeat. And you'd say 12 and say this loop will run 12 times. And because that would be so fast, we wouldn't even be able to see it. I put in a super short delay there just so we could watch it run the loop. And it'll turn the, this loop will run 12 times on and off 12 times. Here we go, Mr. Scratch Cat. Give us our loop. There we go. One, two, three, and it's going to flash 12 times. So that's an example of three simple things uh, that you can do in C and also how to do them in Scratch. So you can visualize it back and forth. So zooming back here to the previous page, this is the page which is going to grow. And I'm going to have multiple videos just like this one. We're going to work our way through the core of the language. It's actually not going to take long at all. You would be amazed how much you just learned today. So go and look at those examples and think about them, type them in yourself, cut and paste them into the compiler, which is right here, yourself, and compile and execute them. And I think you're going to have a super fantastic time, and we're going to le learn C so fast, you're not even going to believe it. Mm -hmm.